my name is Kanal, and welcome to the Geeks of the Valley podcast, which connects with some of the brightest minds globally, who are leading their respective industries today to discuss the hottest upcoming industry trends and how their work is affecting the global economy. This morning from Singapore, we have a very special guest from 1982 Ventures, Scott Krivokovic. Scott, thank you for joining us today. Uh, thanks for having me on, Kanal. And uh, how are things with you on your end? Uh, things are things are pretty good. I'm in uh, safe and uh, warm Singapore. So I think uh, given the given the circumstances globally, um, I really couldn't ask to be in a better place. Certainly around the region here, um, Singapore is is doing a lot better and and um, much better equipped. Um, with its, you know, hospitals and infrastructure and all that to to sort of deal with um, this problem. So uh, d- doing quite well. Uh, how, how are you doing? <laughs> uh, I'm doing very well, Scott. Thank you for asking. Um, and uh, a warm welcome to you uh, for joining us on Geeks of the Valley. It's a, it's a pleasure to be having you here. Likewise. Um, to To kind of get into our first question here, uh, tell us about yourself and your background and how it kind of led up to the path of, of being a VC. Sure. Yeah. Um, I, I think what, like probably a lot of folks in uh, my generation and a bit older, you kind of land into VC, not necessarily in a, in a straight path, um, which may be disheartening uh, for, for to hear. Um, I, I think there's probably more direct routes to get into it Um now, if you're if you're a young person, really starting out, and that's your dream. But um, for me, the the road was a little bit more winding. I grew up in uh, Southern California, which is not a hub for VCs, or it's becoming now. Actually, there's a lot of uh, there's a, the real startup community there, and and even venture funds based there. But um, when I was growing up, it was kind of in the shadow of media. Um, the, there was a lot of innovation and a lot of uh, high high tech things going on, but it was done by large defense contractors. So you had Hughes Aircraft, Lockheed Martin, um, all these sort of really cutting edge stuff, but it it wasn't the out in the open uh, stuff that we see as, as consumers and users every day. Um, And, and I guess that was just a time of the era, but for me, I, um, I, I, I knew I wanted to work in, sort of business, whatever that meant. <laughs> and uh, I certainly like technology. And um, I found my way into New York, uh, moving to New York to, to finish university there. And um, at the time, finance was all the rage. Everybody wanted to be uh, working in finance and, and working uh, you know, at a bank or, or something like that. And that was also quite appealing to me. Um, I, I've, I'm kind of a finance geek uh, the people who know me. Um, and, uh, I, I started my career out working with credit derivatives at PricewaterhouseCoopers. And, and that was an interesting time. Um, if you, if you go back to, to that era, this is when there was a real boom in that space. Um, and then of course there was a crash and a hangover. And, uh, I, because of where, where PWC sits, um, they're, they're a advisory firm and they're not a, uh, a investor or a portfolio manager. And so it was kind of an interesting time for me because we got really busy during the crisis. And that was probably one of the hardest uh, I've worked ever in my life. (laughs) Um, Overnights, overnighters and all that kind of stuff. And it was really a great, a really great experience, but um, looking forward, what it, what it, I took from that is I really got to see the inner workings of uh, finance and financial institutions and how, um, money and credit move around systems and how sometimes they don't move around. Um, so, so that was a, that was a really great experience. Um, the, the next sort of chapter started because a friend of mine that I had worked with um, and I, after the, the kind of crisis started to level out, um, I think we were a little bit bored. Um, you know, there's a lot of adrenaline leading up to that point. And um, we, I think both of us had always had this bit of uh, international, um, international little, uh, I don't know what he call it, an, an urge, as it were. And, and he's actually uh, a 
a European guy. So he was already kind of creating his international experience. I actually, uh, I think had barely had a passport, but um, i had been following China story a lot and really just interested in, in, uh, in, in that and in, in just the change that was going on. And um, so him and I, we, we went out to Shanghai and, and started a business and um, we didn't really know what we were going to do. We, we knew that we had some, some skills and we were able to kind of leverage some relationships that we had. And uh, we, we built a corporate finance advisory business, um, which was a little bit different than what we were doing. But um, I think it, it, it leveraged what we had and it wasn't a traditional startup. I, I think um, if I would have seen it across my desk now, I, I wouldn't fund it. <laughs> but it's a, it's a great business and it, it's a business that still grows today. And again, a lot of lessons learned. And um, I, I really count that time being in China. Uh, I was there for about six, a little more than six years, um, just seeing how fast things can change. Um, when I when I went there, there really wasn't much fintech to speak of. And, and by the time I left, you had the Alipay's um, and 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 ten cents solutions. Just they're they're everywhere. They're ubiquitous. So having a front row seat to that was just awesome. Um, and it also it also gave me a chance to kind of uh, learn how to learn how to do some deal making. Um, we were supporting clients through M um, and A and building their businesses there and, and scaling up very quickly. So so that was a, just a great experience. Um, the next chapter in my life, if we can compress all these things down to, to a few minutes, um, is is the chapter here in Singapore. And uh, family really brought me here. I. I um, I was looking to sort of settle down. Um, the uh, lovely lady who is now my wife uh, was based here. We were doing long distance and we had to decide um, where we were going to really put our feet in the ground and, and uh, start a family. And I think for a lot of reasons, uh, Singapore tended to win out <laughs> over Shanghai, um, despite the, the excitement that Shanghai offers. Um, maybe, maybe excitement is not what you're looking for when you're ready to have some kids. But, um, so, so that chapter started and, and I was fortunate to, uh, land in a job, uh, on the investment side. So, so moving over from that client services side to, to investing. And, and that was, um, really an exciting thing for me because, um, I, I think whenever you're working in client services, you're always thinking, wow, you know, we're doing these amazing deals. It would be great if I, you know, wasn't wasn't getting a, a fee for that if I was actually, um, you know, able to participate in this and, and, and be part of the story afterwards um, and really get to realize some of that value. And so an, initially um, we're looking at some, some growth equity and, and I think they had seen my talents there, um, but we very quickly saw the, the opportunity for investing in early stage for startups. And um, we kind of honed our chops on that. Um, we got some great deals done. And um, that's actually where me and my partner, Hurston, met. So um, that was, a, that was a, a, a really great time for me and, um, and really wouldn't be here had it not been for that. So um, flash forward to uh, December, um, my partner, Hurston, and I have launched our own fund. Um, we're doing, still doing the very similar things. We're, we're, we're trying to do what we know and, uh, we're just excited to really build out a, a franchise business. Wow, Scott, I have to say, uh, quite a fascinating background, uh, that you have, um, all the way from New York to Shanghai to then, um, moving to Singapore to raise a family. I do have to agree with you, though. I think uh, Singapore is a little more friendlier place when it comes to, to raising a family um, from, you know, from what I've noticed <laughs> in regards to uh, how society uh, uh, works over there compared to Shanghai. Um, now you've, you've started this fascinating VC fund, right? You're a founding partner there. Um, what is 1982? Uh, what verticals do you guys focus on? Uh, are you actively investing, raising, and what types of check sizes do you write? Sorry for all those questions in one shot, but uh, I hope uh, I hope you can answer. Sure, this. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 1982 Ventures is really a, a unique animal in Southeast Asia. 
Um, I think it's really the first of its kind. We're a, a seed fund um, and we're a, a sector focused fund. So we only focus on fintech uh, seed investments in South, Southeast Asia. So um, it's very it's very easy, I think, for, for startups to sort of uh, self-qualify if, <laughs> if we might be a fit for them as a, as a partner long term. Um, if it's those three things. And, uh, and that's kind of the, the thing that we know, my partner and I, um, that's what we track. And it's actually a very large space. Um, if you think about fintech and, and um, it, it kind of permeates everything in our lives. Of course, the, the two main verticals are um, payments and lending traditionally, but um, it's, it's ever expanding. Is uh, insurance, um, insure tech, we, we, we look at that. Um, reg tech and, and really any software that you're selling to a financial institution or um, any companies that are, are taking on the role that, uh, that banks and insurance companies used to take on. So um, the, the, the sector look is quite broad, but um, still focused. So, so we, we want to stay in our lane. I think if, if you see us do a deal in, um, in, in fashion or, or something like that, uh, you have to be scratching your head, not not because those aren't great opportunities, but just um, that's maybe not what uh, what what we what we should be doing. <laughs> um, but uh, as as far as the stage, yeah, we we are still very young. I, I think uh, I mentioned we we launched in December. Um, we've we've got a little bit of money in our in our war chest now. Um, we're still continuing to add more. Um, we've just closed our first deal. Last week, um, maybe it would be two, two or three, two weeks ago, um, very soon, um, and that's a that's a uh, deal in Indonesia. We're, we're um, able to put some money with a founder that we've known for quite a while and, and tracking for quite a while, um, and we're just really excited about that. So, um, are we are we raising? Yes. Are we are we deploying? Yes. Um, all of those things. I think we're trying to do uh, everything at once, and and really. This market um, right now is is an interesting one. Um, of course, uh, some adjustments have to be made, but um, there's really some tremendous opportunities um, if, if you can have a plan and remain focused. Did, did I get all the questions or did I skip over one? <laughs> uh, you got all of them. There was one in regards to the types of check sizes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Great question. Great question. Um, we, we typically write... Uh, between a hundred thousand to five hundred thousand dollar checks. Um, that's quite a wide range. Um, I, I don't think it will be that variable in, in reality. We, we want to stay disciplined. Um, I think our standard check size will be about two fifty, but uh, we have some wiggle room. Um, we want to be the first money in to the best to the best companies, um, the first institutional money. So uh, that's that's where we see. Uh, we're able to drive the most value, and that's where we see that um, the best sort of returns for for our investors are going to be is is to back to back founders early, um, and and then and then push them forward to that next stage. And we we've seen a gap emerge in the last few years, um, just with the with the maturity of Singapore and Southeast Asia's VC ecosystem. Um, a lot of the funds here are just growing and, and they're growing on the back of success. So you have to really take your hats off to them. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of uh, liquidity. Um, maybe, maybe this month it won't feel that way, but generally there's a lot of liquidity in the Series A um, space. And, uh, and, and there's, there's a bit less in the seed space, especially for FinTech, um, where, where you have to sometimes really dig into models to, to understand them um, and, and, and give them some, some due time um, compared to some maybe other, other verticals, which are very uh, tangible and, and you can touch and feel to them. So Scott, uh, diving into, you know, you guys, I know are, are FinTech focused, right? And in, in, in one regard, um, diving into that, the FinTech vertical, what type of VC trends are you seeing across uh, Asian and, and maybe uh, the greater globe as well. 